The history of Berkhamsted Castle. Berkhamsted Castle is a Norman Mott and Bailey castle in Berkhamsted in Hertfordshire. It was built to gain control of a key route between London and the Midlands during the Norman Conquest. Chroniclers suggest that the Archbishop of York surrendered to William in Berkhamsted, and it was William who probably ordered the construction of the castle before proceeding south into London. Robert of Mortain, William the Conqueror's half-brother, was probably responsible for overseeing the construction and he became its owner. The castle was located slightly away from the main road to give space for the earthworks and it was positioned to benefit from natural springs running down from under the hill. It had a Mott and Bailey design enclosing just over half an acre. A double bank and ditch ran around the whole castle with both sets of ditches filled with water. A large deer park was established around the castle to provide hunting grounds and a vineyard was also maintained alongside the castle. The old Anglo-Saxon Memorial Centre was moved to the site and as a result the Anglo-Saxon settlement of Berkhamsted may have shifted closer to the castle. Robert's son William rebelled against Henry I, who we see here, and the castle was confiscated. Henry I granted it to his Chancellor Ranulf, but in 1123, when Ranulf was travelling to the castle, allegedly he became over-exhilarated with the view of the site. He fell off his horse and he died from his injuries. The castle was given by Henry II to Thomas Becket when he became Chancellor in 1155. We see both of them here. Becket extended the castle to accommodate his large household. It was probably Becket who rebuilt the castle in stone with a shell keep and an outer stone wall. The bailey was divided into two by a wall to form an inner and an outer bailey and a gatehouse led down into the town meeting with Castle Street. Becket fell from favour in 1164 and the castle was confiscated by the king. He liked Berkhamsted and subsequently used it himself extensively. He had already officially recognised the surrounding settlement of Berkhamsted as a town in 1156. Under King John, who we see here, the castle became part of the lands forming the jointure of his second wife, Isabella. John entrusted the castle to Geoffrey Fitzpeter in 1206, who rebuilt much of the town. Geoffrey died in 1213, and the castle then passed to his son, John Fitzgeoffrey. Political tensions in England were rising. In early 1215, King John installed a trusted German mercenary called Ranulf at Berkhamsted Castle and reviewed the defensive arrangements that April. Civil war broke out later that same year, but initially the rebel barons were hampered by a lack of equipment. The French supported the barons and in May 1216, Prince Louis, the future Louis VIII, crossed over the English Channel bringing heavy siege equipment. We can see him arriving here. He was proclaimed king in London. King John died in October that year and in December, Louis besieged Berkhamsted Castle. The prince deployed his siege engines and attacked the castle repeatedly for 20 days, throwing what chroniclers termed innumerable damnable stones at the defenders. The French may have built a series of firing platforms around the outside of the walls at this stage. Those are shown in this plan on the section marked A. The garrison surrendered. However, in the following year, forces loyal to the young Henry III defeated the rebels and the castle was returned to royal hands. Henry III's younger brother, Richard, became the Earl of Cornwall and he inherited the castle from his mother Isabella 
so it became a permanent part of the earldom of Cornwall. Berkhamsted was Richard's favourite castle, partly because it was conveniently close to London. Richard was a wealthy man and a skilful diplomat. He had an impressive three-storey tower built in 1254 and restored much of the rest of the castle, developing it as a palatial residence. The remains of the chapel and undercroft of the tower survive. The castle was used for the central administration of the earldom and Richard's nine stewards would submit their annual financial reports there. Meanwhile, the town of Berkhamsted itself became rich because of the growing wool trade. Richard died at the castle in 1272. Later it will pass on through Edward I, seen here, and his second wife Margaret to Edward II. Edward II gave it to his favourite, Piers Gaveston, whom he made Earl of Cornwall. Gaveston was married here in 1307, with Edward in attendance. However, Edward II and Gaveston fell from power in 1327, and John, Edward's second son, took possession as the new Earl of Cornwall. When John died, Edward III reclaimed Berkhamsted Castle for the crown, and he used it as his main property. His son Edward, the Black Prince, seen here, was created Duke of Cornwall, and he too made extensive use of the castle. He took advantage of the aftermath of the Black Death to extend the castle's park by 65 acres, including some wooden pasture stretching over the Chilterns, eventually producing a park covering nearly a thousand acres. The castle was also used to hold John II of France, after he was taken prisoner at the Battle of Poitiers. When the Black Prince fell ill following his campaigning in France, he retired at Berkhamsted and died there in 1376. Richard II inherited the castle. At first he gave the use of it to his favourite, Robert de Vere, shown on the picture in the right, and then after de Vere's fall from power and exile in 1388, to John Holland. Then Henry IV lived in the castle after he deposed Richard in 1399 and he used the property to imprison rivals to the throne. It was during this period that Geoffrey Chaucer oversaw renovation in his role as a clerk. Later, both Henry V on the left and Henry VI on the right owned the castle and the latter used it until his overthrow in 1461. Berkhamsted was confiscated by Edward IV when he came to power during the Wars of the Roses, and in the late 15th century, the castle was occupied by his mother, Cecily Neville, the Duchess of York. But by now the castle had become unfashionable, and it was abandoned after her death in 1495. By the time antiquarian John Leland visited in the mid-16th century, it was in ruins. In 1580, the estate, including the ruins and the park, was leased by Elizabeth I to Sir Edward Carey for the nominal rent of one red rose each year. Stone from the castle was used to build Berkhamsted Place on top of the hill overlooking the castle as well as a local school and other buildings. The castle's park was broken up and the English Civil War of the 1640s largely passed Berkhamsted by. In 1761, the wider estate was leased to the Duke of Bridgewater while the castle remained in the direct control of the Duchy of Cornwall. Later, the surrounding estates and park was sold off altogether to Earl Brownlow who also rented the castle for a nominal amount. 
It was almost destroyed during the construction of the London and Birmingham Railway in the 1830s, but fortunately it was given statutory protection. However, part of the outer earthworks along with the gatehouse were destroyed. Here we can just see a couple of the surviving features. So we have the well. And here we can see one of the hearths. From about 1841 right up to the end of the 19th century, a soup kitchen operated within the castle ruins. It was set up as a charity by Charlotte Catherine Ann, Countess of Bridgewater, to feed destitute agricultural workers during the winter months. Contemporary accounts in the Bucks Herald describe the distribution of soup and bread to hundreds of poor people from a house in the castle grounds, thought to be the 19th century keeper's house, which still stands in the outer ward, and which you can see in the background of this picture. Berkhamsted Castle is open to visitors. It's managed by English Heritage, and it's an interesting place to visit and to contemplate the history that's happened here.